Now friends, let us continue our discussion regarding the small intestine. In the small intestine, at the beginning of the chapter, we said there are two large digestive glands, the first among which was the liver and the second is the pancreas. So let us see about these two digestive glands in this module. As we said, liver. So here we see the red large gland called as liver. Liver, my dear friends, is the largest gland in the body which secretes a juice called as bile juice. The bile juice is transported through the hepatic duct and stored in the gallbladder. Please do not confuse, my dear friends. Bile juice is produced by the liver. It is transported through the hepatic duct and stored inside the green organ we see over here known as the gallbladder. So here we see the bile juice which is produced in the liver getting transported through the hepatic duct and getting stored inside the gallbladder. The color of the bile juice is due to certain pigments called as the biliverdine and bilirubin produced by the breakdown of the dead and worn out red blood cells. So because of the breakdown of the dead and worn out red blood cells, there are certain pigments called as biliverdine and bilirubin which give a particular color to the bile juice. Now friends, whenever the food enters the small intestine, the gallbladder releases bile juice into it through the cystic duct. Now, when the food is entering the small intestine, we know it enters into the small intestine from the stomach through the duodenum. So, when the food is entering the small intestine, what happens is that the gallbladder releases the bile juice into it through the cystic duct. So, the duct which we see over here is the cystic duct through which the gallbladder releases the bile juice. Now friends, the bile contains a lot of sodium bicarbonate. So, there is a lot of sodium bicarbonate present inside the bile which neutralizes the acidic content of the food received from the stomach and it also makes the food kind alkaline. Friends, as we know, inside the stomach, what happened? There were acidic enzymes, correct? So, because of that acidic pH, the food became acidic. We produced an acidic chyme. Now, when that acidic chyme enters the small intestine, because of the bile juice and the presence of sodium bicarbonate inside the bile juice, what happens is that acidic chyme gets converted to alkaline. So, the bile juice when transported from the gallbladder makes the food alkaline. It also reduces the surface tension, my dear friends. The bile reduces the surface tension of fats and breaks them into tiny droplets. The process, we call it as the emulsification of fats for providing a greater surface area for the action of enzymes. So the bile juice, what does it do? It breaks down the fat molecules into tiny droplets. This process is called as the emulsification of fats. And due to the tiny droplets produced, my dear friends, what happens is that it provides a greater surface area to, for the enzymes to act upon the food. Overall, let us see the role of the bile juice in the food. As we said, the fats when acted upon by the bile, it gets converted to tiny droplets. We call this as the emulsified fat. And next is the acidic chyme when acted upon by bile. And due to the presence of sodium bicarbonate as we see here, it gets converted to an alkaline chyme. Now friends, the next gland we shall be seeing, the next gland is the pancreas. So the pancreas secrete pancreatic juice now. Pancreas, my dear friends, are the organs which are located behind the stomach of a person. So pancreas are located behind the stomach and they secrete a juice called as pancreatic juice. The pancreatic duct, pancreatic duct is a pancreatic opening, opens the duodenum by an aperture, aperture is an opening my dear friends. So the pancreatic duct opens into the duodenum by an aperture or an opening common to that of the bile duct. Means what? That there is a common opening for the cystic duct called as the bile duct 
and the pancreatic duct. So, we call it as the common duct. So, we see the juices, the bile juices as well as the pancreatic juices getting opened into the duodenum by a common duct. So, here is the common duct which lets in also the bile juices as well as the pancreatic juices. Now friends, let us understand the enzymes which are there inside the pancreatic juice. The first enzyme my dear friends is the trypsin. So, trypsin is digesting the remaining proteins inside the food and the polypeptides. So, the trypsin is digesting or breaking down the remaining proteins and polypeptides in the food. So, here we see the proteins when acted upon by trypsin produces smaller peptides and amino acids. Trypsin my dear friends is first secreted as an inactive trypsinogen. Please remember this trypsin is first secreted as inactive trypsinogen which is activated to trypsin by an enzyme called as enterokinase also called enteropeptidase secreted by the inner lining of the duodenum. So, the inner lining of the duodenum secretes enteropeptidase which activates the trypsinogen to trypsin. The second enzyme is steepsin. Steepsin digests emulsified fats into fatty acids and glycerol. So, here we see the steepsin acting upon the fats to form emulsified fats. The third enzyme my dear friends is the pancreatic amylase or amylopsin. So, pancreatic amylase is also called as amylopsin. Now, let us see what does pancreatic amylase do. Pancreatic amylase digests leftover starch into maltose. So, pancreatic amylase acts upon the leftover starch to produce maltose. So, these were the three enzymes present inside the pancreatic juice. So, now let us see the overall role of pancreatic juice on the food. As we said there is a trypsinogen which is the inactive form of trypsin. Trypsinogen when acted upon by enterokinase which is an enzyme makes the trypsinogen active into trypsin. The next is proteins and peptides when acted upon by trypsin it gives smaller peptides and amino acids. The next we see the leftover starch when acted upon by amylase produces maltose and emulsified fats when acted upon by steepsin it produces fatty acids plus glycerol. So, here we have trypsinogen when acted upon by enterokinase gives us trypsin which is an active form. Proteins and peptides when acted upon by trypsin gives us smaller peptides and amino acids and the leftover starch when acted upon by amylase gives us maltose and emulsified fats when acted upon by steepsin it gives us fatty acids and glycerol. So, here we see the digestive function of the small intestine my dear friends. Now, let us see about absorption in the further modules.